Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Ah, ah, sorry about that. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those of you who don't know what the hell you are yet. Hop along, Pierre here. We're back playing Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky. Okay, so this episode is going to be as long as it needs to be because I cannot go and level grind until I progress the plot some. Yeah, I wasn't even planning to record right now, but oh well. Let's see. This is my house. Wow, nice place. Professor Russell is here? No, I think he's in the workshop. Grandpa! Through this door. We should go say hi then. Um, let's list the things I do not want to do. A, jump off a cliff. B, be surrounded by millipedes. C, Enter a med scientist's lab. Unannounced. Oh. That wasn't nearly as dangerous as I thought it was going to be. As of right now. Still a possibility of getting terrible. I'm home, Grandpa. Okay, maybe this way. So this is the professor. Nice to meet you. My name is Sal Bright of the Bracer Guild. Make sure you get your expert opinion on. Um. Got it! Yeah! He did it! It's finally complete! That's right. Who's the man? I'm the man! Yes, I should start testing it at once. Whoa! Whoa! What the hell? I'm, I'm sorry, Stell. Grandpa kind of gets into a trance when he's working. He doesn't really notice what's going around him. I think he just finished up the device he's been working on for the past few days. He really is something. Oh, he's something, all right. I'm so embarrassed. Okay, old man. You know they should just whip out the package, and he'll probably take a notice of that. Hmm? Oh, no, Nita, you come just the right time. I need your help with compiling the data for these tests. But Grandpa, this individual will automatically block a bio sensors orbit detection facilities it emits a unique orbital force so that it flex the energy that biosensors sends out when it scans really yes since when do i overstate my own accomplishments come on you got some testing to do right well it seems like she <laughs> takes after him hey now never mind estelle i think we should just let them be for a while hey you with the black hair who else in the upstairs bookcase is no called orbital energy applied to force fields go get it be quick about it all right wait joshua you're the only lady with the antenna hair a antenna quit farting around make some coffee why does it make you coffee take it black by the way i want it clear as mud now here we say fine whatever <sighs> yay perfect i'll say grandpa just as fast as ever oh uh, we're still in the who? Come think of it. I do vaguely call a couple of young folk. Murdoch sent some fresh faces, I presume. Grandpa. And so Estelle and Joshua inadvertently wound up as assistants in experiments. After many small, but relatively harmless explosions and some singeing of the eyebrows, the day gave way to evening. Oh, sorry about that. I just presumed you were both new employees at the Central Factory. It's only natural that you wound up being drafted as assistants. It's no laughing matter, especially since the only thing you had me help with making coffee. Girls can bang metal parts together too, old man. Relax this stuff. We got some value experience out of it in the end. How often does one get to participate in startup tests and a brand new type of orbman after all? Well, you're a bright lad now, aren't you? I want to give you this bracer nonsense startup in the field of orbital engineering. Grandpa, I'm really sorry, guys. I guess I got caught up in the moment too. You don't need to apologize. But I thought the father of the orbital revolution was going to be some amazing man. Not some old fart with attention deficit issues. Please, you're too kind. Moving on, I'm being paid a visit by the children of Cassius. It's quite a surprise. So we didn't know our dad. Yes, from way back when. Knew him since his army days, some 20 years ago. I met him too. He had a really nice mustache, right? Well, I don't know if I'd call it nice so much as suspicious looking. But I've known dad. But he knows dad for that long. It looks like we'll be entrusting you know what with the professor. I agree. What are you talking about? What is it you want my help with? Well... Explain the situation. I see. Wow, a pitch black ornament. 
Most intriguing. No inscribed caliber or seams. Look at that frame too. Professor Russell produced a cutting tool from his belt. That I where he pushed the blade edge against the outer shell of the orbment. What are you doing? It's a special alley steel cutter. So I thought. Here, take a look. Joshua's cell indeed appeared intently at the black orbit. Not even a scratch. This frame made from some type of metal I've never encountered. Opening up for a closer look isn't going to be quite the easy task, I think. That's just crazy. If we can't find some way to open it, it might be right back to square one. Well, I could certainly spend some time trying. First, I think maybe we should put it under a measurement scan. The huge piece of equipment you saw when we were working on the experiment. You can gauge orbital energy activity in real time. You're making my head hurt with such techno babble. Just tell me what you're using the thing will accomplish. Put it in layman's term to allow us to see what the orbit does. We won't be able to draw any definitive conclusions from measuring what kind of orbital activity is occurring, but it's a start. Which gives a major clue. Indeed. So, without further ado, Grandpa, should we have lunch first? Sure. Style and Josh, we're both welcome to join us. I can't promise we have any special, but it sounds great to me. We'll even help with prep. All right, come on then. Got a bet to do while lunch is prepared. No, I want to see it too. No fair working until I'm not around. My house, my rules. What's up with these two? I see where she gets it. They're both just children at heart. Ahem. Now, if everyone is ready, let's get started. So if you put the ornament on the stand... Okay. Like this? Yes, thank you. Are you ready, dear? All set. Good, good. Now commence the orbital force measurement test on the black orbit. The black orbit, so that's what's gonna be its official name. But using it officially is so boring and simple. <laughs> Not like dark thinking of impending doom. No, no, simple is best. Any longer than black orbit, we'd just be annoying to say. Oh, look at her. She's so anxious to start. Oh, all right. Let's begin. Theta, if you'd like to wait the scanner, please. Okay. It's going to wreck shit. I'll put it at 45. Put all measuring equipment on standby. Roger. Done. All measuring equipment is calibrated. Okay. From here on out, this is the real deal. Since no direct input or output was detected, all we can do is measure how the central circuit responds. Let's see how much the contraption rule is really worth. You're sure in a good mood. And click. Neat. It's glowing and stuff. I get it. It's putting major strain on the crystal. There, there. Need to any readings? Yes. But they're kind of weird. Hmm? The technometer's reading is shaking like crazy. Now it's spinning around the dial. What? going on here same black light from before what <laughs> it's caused the town to black out yep so that thing is essentially a giant EMP Ooh, that's kind of terrifying. Since everything runs in orbitals. Grandpa, I can't take much more of this. We have to shut it down. Don't you dare. Just longer, we'll have something. Wait a second. All the lights of the town are going out. What in the... Oh, I had no choice. Terminating the experiment. Oh, they're back on. Whew. Let's see their readout. Nothing. It didn't record anything. The only thing kept working was the scanner, which the orbit was set. But even that, that's for everything else. Good. It looks like the experiment's finished. How's it outside? Fine. All the lights are back. It's like nothing happened. There's still a lot of people panicking, though. Okay. But just what the hell was that? That. I would dub the orbital shutdown phenomenon. The what? I mean, everything inside all the orbits just stopped working at once. So the black orbit did this? Yes, I've no doubt. Well, I would never have dared to guess something would affect be so extensive. There's definitely more to this than I expected. Interesting. Most interesting indeed. Only you would think causing a blackout for an entire city is interesting. Professor! 
Ah, Murdoch, just mad I want to see. This is not feeling not neutral. Every single time you invent something, it means trouble for me. What the hell are you doing all the causing all the power to go down? How rude. It's not even my fault this time. See that there? Black Hornet. It caused this. Is that the gag at it? That's true to this. It's genuine, exhausting, extenuating circumstances. But still means it was your fault. Ah, nuts. You got me. That's it? They're just okay again? Why are they always like this? It's just so embarrassing. So that's yes. And so the first day in Zeiss kept everyone busy. Due to how late it was, Estelle and Joshua stayed at the lab for the night. Yay! Free recovery. Free recovery. Here we go. What's going on now? Man, yesterday was such a crazy day. Surprised that the town was expecting to deal with anything like that. Back to the subject of Black Gorman. It's much more powerful than anything we'd ever imagined. Yeah. What's a professor going to do with equipment like all that kerfluey? Good morning, guys. Morning, Tita. Good morning. Quite a big day yesterday. No kidding. Did you guys sleep okay? Yep. Like babies. Professor already up. Oh, he left for the central factory earlier this morning. He said something about how he's going to expose all the black orbman secrets. Wow, looks like getting roared over and by the factory chief yesterday didn't even put a dent in him. Really appreciate both of you taking the time for something that a couple of strangers brought you. Oh, it's fine, really. Grandpa's investigating out of pure curiosity more than anything. Just go to the factory myself once I'm done with breakfast. What do you plan to do? Actually, I'll be coming with you. I don't know what's going on with the orbman too, but we have something we can do to help. Yay, then you can come with me. I almost forgot about the soup. Just a second, you two. I'll bring you breakfast as soon as I make it edible and not on fire. I guess that's what that smell is, but... Man, what a cute day. I wish I could take her back to with the roll into with us. She'd be like a pet cheering us up whenever we're feeling down. That's kind of creepy, Estelle. Aww. And now that we had a good breakfast, off to the central factory. Before we do that, I'd like to check in at the guild. Might be best to report in what happened yesterday, just be on the safe side. Okay, get either. Mind if I stop by there on the way? Sure, go ahead. Can I? Nope. Like I said, this episode is going to be as long as it needs to be. So I'm at the 12 minute mark already, so. We need to get that done soon. Good morning. That was some day yesterday, wasn't it? When you are ready, we'd like to report your full report on it. Business as usual, huh? Can I get up? I've heard the basic from the factory chief already, but I'd like to expand with some first-hand details. Well, I explain the situation. I see. So the orbit was sent to the Cassius in secret of the fact that it's something dangerous. The guild is very interested in these developments. We need to continue working with Professor Russell for the present. We thought you'd say that. When we have more information, we'll contact you immediately. Yeah, that's when it'll be stolen. That's when we'll contact you. When things go bad. Ah. Oh. Well. Better get all this out of the way now. Hey, long time to see. Hey, it has been a while this kid you remember that kid who was looking for a quartz shard and roll don't you I took a request a while back are you headed to the republic nah the central factory we made some cash in Grantsel and had some shopping to do mom said we're gonna take this mirror and stack up an ornament they say the eyes are the first to go but she can still spot a good deal I see you are still an obnoxious brat but i'm only saying what everybody else is thinking but yeah check out those crazy moving stairs i'll never get tired of them nope escalators are fun I don't care how you are, because they can set up a perpetual slinky. I don't know if it's been done before, but it needs to be. Scientists, what the hell are you doing if not deep space exploration, deep sea exploration, and perpetual slinkiness? Honestly, you'd think that you'd be doing something useful with your time. I still want that. But instead of 666, I need 800. I should... She'd have that be just based out of sheer number coincidence without having to sell to get it. Um, fourth floor?
I think so, because this is where we talked to Murdoch yesterday. Uh, nope. Very interesting. I guess I could have guessed that you'd say that. Take it to Professor Russell. Terry's a completely different story. Who the fuck cares? All right, let's go up a floor. You know, presuming it's not on the roof. Which, A, would be cool. Okay, you're not here. God damn it, where are you, old man? Oh, this is just a beautiful city set. Ooh, I wonder if it is on there. No, I'm not head to the roof quite yet. Uh, second was a library, clinic, and design room. Maybe he already hurt himself. Nope. Workshop. Here we go. Ah, another failure. Grandpa, we came to see if we could help. Oh, hello, Tita. You two are here as well, I see. What can I say? We're worried. So what you working on? Well, as you can see, I'm trying to cut into the black ornament, but it hasn't been going very well. So what seems to be the problem? Perhaps a demonstration is in order. And click. Whoa, what is that thing? It's a circular saw. Made from special alloy that can cut through basically anything. That ought to do it then. Nope. Uh, it stopped. Thought that might happen. It's on a smaller scale, but the same phenomenon as yesterday. It's like the black ormen is functionally blocking the other ormens, interfering with them. And no doubt it was fully made for the purpose of killing the lights. But Grandpa, doesn't the effect spread like it did last night? Yeah, it's good thinking. This interface with nearby ormen seemed to spread out, moving from ormen to ormen like chain lightning. With the rage about fire agar, the no ormen's powered within that range then well the effect stops i see that makes sense however even with that now there's no way to know why it caused the machine to stop without taking a look inside it's very troubling is there any way to destroy this thing Maybe with a good scream or a really good whack don't be ridiculous did you see the big saw do nothing just a minute ago well yeah anyone thought of trying fire maybe melt down a, like a blast furnace or something if we did that the insides of the, would melt too that was worth a shot. Actually, I might work. Really? You know a way to burn it open? No, that's not what I meant. Orbital power. That which drives the orbits. Can't be used. Let's find a way that doesn't rely on orbital energy. A combustion engine. A device that burns fuel to generate energy. It has been a long time, but it's very inefficient compared to the orbital engine. However, all you need it to work are standard tools. Neat. I get it. Fire's the key. But Grandpa, I've never seen one of them. It's pretty certain that there's one other city in Central Factory Workshop. You'll need to get fuel as well. Like oil or something? No, it's called gasoline. Extremely flammable. It's like like tinker canister stored in the reserve. Yes, your dove. I'll get the tools ready. I'll help. Is there anything we can do? I mean, I can't do anything super technical. We can go ahead and get the engine and gasoline. It's going to be heavy, so your brace should be strong enough to move it. Leave it to us. So, where would you find these? Hmm? Let's see. Don't tell me you've forgotten. I've forgotten. Is that not to say that? Estelle, if you look in the operations room, you could probably find them. Heck is operations room. It's a room with a bunch of horrible computers on the fifth floor. We store kind of all information for safekeeping. You know, even such a place. There, I leave it in your capable hands. Making coffee, fetching stuff. Well played, old man. Well played. Let's go find this operation room. Oi. Well, it's a good thing I was already there. So I know where it is. No, not the roof. So if it makes me get out, I think I might actually... Oh, that's a nice little view. Ooh, what's this? Okay. It's just a stairwell. Nothing special. Damn it. Ha. Wow. It has to be operations room. 
Hey, you two. I was dating you before, so mind telling me what business you have in here? My name is Travis, Senior Engineer and Supervisor. Nice to meet you. We're through the Bracers Guild. We're at the request of Professor Russell. Russell? He's not in trouble again, is he? Again? You don't much faith in him, do you? I mean, I realize he's a genius. He's the one to develop the capital unit, after all. We've been acquainted with him, results in no end of trouble. We know that it's an incredibly sweet girl, just an all-around good kid. I get what you mean. I don't think we have time to stand along talking. We need to find the central factory stores its equipment. Well, what's this all about? In that case, go right ahead. I'll show you how to work. Cylindrical device is type of computer. It's called the Capel. These days, it's mostly get to assist in airship navigation. This one is good for fast general purposes, data processing in the world. Use anything from calculating material density to information retrieval. Now for information retrieval, use the front panel to select that mode. It'll send the signal through the wiring, allow you to access the memory orbit. It's quartz inside, rapid, yeah. So just you know how to work? No sweat. I'm impressed, Estelle. You're way better with modern technology than I am. Okay, I lied. All this stuff went completely over my head. Well, here's the stuff. You change the mode with this panel. I'm sure you figure it out in no time. Oh, are you kidding me? Central factory. Related topics. Combustion engine. The machine generates usable energy by burning fuel. Less efficient than normal. No owner. Maintenance chief Gustav. A liquid from the purification of naturally hydrocarbon known as petroleum. Emergency stores, 20 mid-sized egg repository, orbital, orbit man, bleh, manufacturing factory. Olives. So a tank. Okay. So I got it. You talk to Gustav. A magic box or something. World computers are really something. I understand it. Professor Russell's teacher, Professor Epstein, was responsible for the original concept. But Russell's talent made it into reality. If only his presence and mind are par with his intelligence. Ah, well, Adios isn't one to bestow two blessings on one person. Where can we find the guy who's in charge of the combustion engine thingies? I mean, this chief. He's currently overseeing airfields, so you have to go speak to him there. Also, the gasoline is likely in the orbit manufacturing in the basement. Talk to the staff there. Down in the airfield and gasoline basement. Got it. I just wanted to level grind. Was that really so? Was that really so much to ask for? Nay, I say nay. Okay, I think that was. Okay, we'll just be lying around. Okay, that's a stairwell. Hmm. Hey, dude. Can you help us? Explain you gasoline? We have a back storage. I'll check for you. This is fake. Got a request down here. Saw that tank of Calvert gasoline in the warehouse, right? Can you send it down? You're sending somebody right away. Sending. Holy shit. Here we are. This is guessing such really is sending is. Neat, isn't it? Conveyor belt isn't just for ordering goods. Entire network that connects the whole facility. Convenient. Professor Russell invented it. Blah. Okay, I'm gonna end this episode. God damn it. Alright, I'll see you in the next episode, guys.